Hey, how's it going? This is Chad Haig reporting from Southern India. I'd like to continue the series of videos in our Missing Link News show in which we react to the headlines of the day, but with that crucial element restored, which might allow you to really understand what is going on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, obviously there's a lot going on now because um, we are only 40 days away from a presidential election in the United States of America, but actually it's something of an anachronism to say what I just said. It's not really the case that the election will be held on, what, the first Tuesday of November. November because in a modern presidential election like this one, about two-thirds of the votes are actually cast before that date. And early voting has already started in places like Virginia, as I understand, but not with the results you might have expected. Did you hear the surprising news that in the blue state of Virginia, early voting data seems to indicate that the Republican turnout is way up compared to 2020 and the Democrat turnout is way down compared to 2020. Now, it's interesting that this is happening in Virginia of all states for what is Virginia, economically speaking, except obviously not the whole state is suburbs of Washington, D.C., but a lot of the population there is. So if there's one group of people who could actually be expected to support four more years, four more years of higher taxes, higher inflation, um, more Venezuelan uh, gangsters forcing people out of their apartments at machine gun point, more Venezuelan rapists kidnapping college girls in Georgia and then dismembering their body parts to deposit them in the forest um, in the same county where the sheriff ran on the platform, I refuse to cooperate with ICE, and more um, tax dollars given in um, not so universal basic income to fentanyl addicts so they can be subsidized to poop in front of people's businesses before fleeing in the morning, the state that um, Colorado, my own home state, has fallen into, unfortunately, in recent days. Well, if there's one group of people who could actually hear all of that, see it with their own eyes for four years, and say, hell yeah, four more years, you would expect it to be the people of Virginia. For, after all, who are the only people who will actually directly financially benefit from the Democrat policy of simply borrowing and spending their way out of a recession which should have already arrived, but they've been able to hold it off just a little longer by increasing the national debt to $35 trillion and um, passing these trillion dollars large um, spending bills that have driven inflation up to the point that uh, many people who used to consider themselves solidly middle class no longer do, as uh, they have joined the many other people who are now living in vans in the winter time. But if there's one group of people who could actually look at all of that and say, hell yes, four more years, because they stand to directly benefit from all of this out-of-control government spending, isn't it the federal government employees of Washington, D.C. and the surrounding suburbs in Virginia itself. Well, it's interesting that um, that blue state, which um, the polls said Biden was ahead of Trump by 20 points in at this point in 2020, have now dropped down to a statistical tie. Some polls show the vote tied in Virginia. Others show Harris leading by one or two points. Now, am I saying that Trump is going to win Virginia? No. I mean, there will probably be a victory for the Democrat in that state, but it's going to be a hell of a lot smaller than you might have expected. But what happens if we extrapolate from this to the rest of the country? For example, if we extrapolate to the Midwest, you know, the place where they handpicked a running mate for Kamala from, like in Minnesota, they have these uh, staged images of Tim Walz wearing a trucker hat and hunting pheasants with a rifle to prove, hey, I'm not an out-of-touch government bureaucrat from D.C. who seeks to raise your taxes and regulate your industries to per personally enrich myself. No, I'm just an ordinary guy like you from out in the Midwest. Um, interestingly, the more articulate of the two on that ticket, and yet still um, it couldn't stop himself from making a very interesting sort of gaffe just what yesterday, in which, um, speaking to a rally, uh, 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 the audience at a rally, he said, uh, quote-unquote, we can't stomach another four years of this. Well, if you have any knowledge of English grammar, you'll realize that um, what he meant to refer to with the pronoun this could not have actually been for if he says, we can't stomach another four years of this. He's not talking about the four years you had in the Trump presidency when, you know, there was no inflation and um, there was a lot of jobs and uh, there was no World War III starting in Ukraine and Gaza and Lebanon, you know, those years that were so terrible. Well, by saying we can't stomach another four years of this, he couldn't have been referring to anything except the presidency we're already living under, in which case he actually is closer to the truth. He's 
in agreement accidentally with what most people should be thinking. Um, but uh, it, of course, uh, the more articulate one of the two still wasn't able to communicate that idea correctly. This is, of course, much better than the other one's attempts to repeat things people told her to say. For example, when uh, Kamala was trying to convince the voters in middle America that she's not an out-of-touch uh, federal government bureaucrat who, once again, seeks to raise your taxes and regulate your job out of existence just to enrich themselves. Um, she gave a bizarre response at a staged town hall in which what appears to be a paid actor um, asked her the question specifically, what policies will you enact as president to lower costs for ordinary Americans who cannot pay their bills? Her response to that was, well, you know, I grew up uh, in an ordinary middle class neighborhood where my neighbors were truck drivers and school teachers, and uh, we couldn't afford to buy a home until I was in high school, and these are good people who care about their lawns. Well, it seems to me that um, whoever really wrote that line for her probably had a little more extra context to explain why exactly this reference to people who care about their lawns is really supposed to have to do with lowering costs, but um, the uh, actor there, um, Kamala herself, seems to have forgotten the rest of her lines. So kind of like those 1980s video games in which something was translated from Japanese into English by somebody who doesn't actually speak English, leaving the original context very obscure and mysterious. It's kind of like that all over again. Uh, Kamala's the candidate of all your bases are belong to us. But once again, if we extrapolate from Virginia, which is basically the suburbs of D.C., to the heartland of America, places like Michigan in the Midwest, a state they absolutely have to have to have any credible path to victory, which is why they picked a candidate from kind of nearby in Minnesota. You have to wonder what the results will turn out to be if in a state like Michigan, where people by and large have to actually work in private industries and things like manufacturing to make a living. They don't have the benefit of getting pay raises every time the government borrows trillions more in huge spending bills uh, as uh, federal government employees in D.C. presumably will see things. You have to ask, how can the Democrats win a state like Michigan if the fundamentals on a demographic level are falling apart right before our eyes. You may have heard the news of the only Muslim majority city in the United States, the only city with um, a all Muslim city council somewhere in Michigan near Dearborn. Um, the mayor um, actually came out and not only refused to endorse Kamala, but um, I not only voted uncommitted as the majority of people there did in the primaries by not voting for Biden, um, he actually just endorsed Trump. And if you look at the polling for Muslims in uh, Michigan, um, Kamala's in third place. Uh, Jill Stein, I believe, is leading. Trump is in second place, and Kamala's in third place. So a huge voting block, which they need to win a swing state like Michigan, seems to have actually just gone the other way. It's not that many of them are just going to stay home and not give Trump the advantage. It seems that a certain percentage of them are actually going to give their vote to the Republican side. But be that as it may, you could argue that another... Um, a uh, key demographic in the state of Michigan will still show up for them. Like, let's just say, the idea that um, the African-American vote is going to go overwhelmingly to someone like Kamala Harris because she claims to be, quote-unquote, African-American, even though, last I checked, her ancestors were not, quote-unquote, freed slaves in one of the southern states, um, as was admittedly the case for someone like Michelle Obama. Her ancestors were, what, uh, was slaves in South Carolina. Well, Kamala actually is black in the sense that her father is from Jamaica and her mother was actually a high-caste Hindu uh, of Tamil descent from Sri Lanka. But be that as it may, the expectation that the African-American vote would go exclusively to her just because she was marketed as an African-American by the media is really falling through when you consider the data, the surveys, the polls that show that about 26% of black men under the age of 50 are actually voting for Trump. In one poll, I believe, conducted by the NAACP, Harris failed to break 50% in that particular demographic, standing at about 49%. So that's another demographic which is not showing up for her in, say, a state like Michigan or Pennsylvania in the way that the media would lead you to believe. But there's one more piece of damning evidence calling into question her ability to really win a state like Michigan, and that is the Union Dems. Now, it almost sounds like an anachronism to talk about Union Dems today um, for the people who made the Rust Belt reliably blue in past decades are now um, people who, whereas just 
a few months ago, even in July 2024, after Biden showed the world that his dementia had progressed to the point that his ability to lead for another four months, let alone another four years, was deeply called into question. Among the Teamsters members, Biden still had a lead over Trump, being up in the 40s, whereas Trump was in the 30s. Well, once again, switching out um, working class Joe for uh, California Kamala has eroded away that lead to the point that now Trump is up two to one against Kamala. He's up in the 60s, she's down in the 30s. So this leads us to ask, who is left? If you've lost the Muslim vote in Michigan, you're losing the African-American young younger male vote very badly um, compared to what past trends had been, and you're losing the Union Dems. Who the hell is left to be that face of the Democrat Party? And the answer to that is something which I think we have to consider in light of recent news about arrests. Now, you may have heard the very shocking and disturbing news about um, he who was once called Puff Daddy and that became P. Diddy, and now is the guy that everyone who did know him pretends they don't know, and certainly they never partied with him. He's become the new Jeffrey Epstein. All of these celebrities who used to brag about going to his parties are suddenly very, very quiet. They act like they'd never known the guy, and one other person who wishes she could erase the past she has with him is none other than the presidential candidate herself. There was an old tweet by Kamala Harris thanking P. Diddy for some sort of support he gave her as a Democrat Party donor, which she um, probably should have deleted in much the same way that um, Subway deleted all of their um, posts about Jared Fogel after he went to prison for similar crimes in 2015. Well, um, unfortunately, that post really speaks for itself, doesn't it? For if there's one guy... I would argue he really is the face of the Democrat Party. It is P. Diddy. Now, you might have heard the shocking allegations that um, he was actually arrested and denied bail despite offering $50 million and, you know, signatures by his family members and things like that to get out of jail. Um, he uh, still um, is remaining in custody, even in New York City, which notoriously doesn't arrest people for real crimes, um, he is still in custody because he is such a grave danger to the public after being caught um, engaging in racketeering and human trafficking and um, apparently uh, using his power and influence as a wealthy music industry mogul, whatever they call him. I don't know about you, but I can't name a single song Bite P. Diddy, except for the song which he ripped off of Sting and the Police in the late 1990s after his buddy, well, probably more than his buddy, given the recent allegations. Um, uh, Biggie Smalls was shot and killed. He ripped off um, the song I'll Be Watching You by the police, and he just changed the lyric to I'll Be Missing You, and somehow we're led to believe that uh, he is one of the most talented people in the music industry for engaging in that sort of blatant plagiarism and lack of creativity. Well, he used his power, wealth, and influence as a music industry guy to um, lure women into thinking that um, if they got involved with him, he, he could uh, yeah, boost their musical career, make them into a celebrity or something. Instead, he simply imprisoned them in a form of uh, slavery in which they would be forced to participate in apparently days-long freak-offs, as he called them, in which um, male prostitutes would come to these locations and um, in and force these women to engage in degrading acts, which Diddy would uh, kind of just record and, you know, uh, pleasure himself to in front of them, proving that the funny thing about the amount of power and uh, fame and wealth which someone like Diddy got is really the most he could do with that. The ultimate thing he could do with this many get-out-of-jail-free cards in which the shootings and arsons and other crimes he committed, assaults, all of those he was let off the hook for for decades, with that amount of power as a wealthy Democrat Party donor and music industry quote-unquote leader, um, the most he was able to do with it was basically just to engage in a type of solipsistic voyeurism in which he forced people to do stuff in front of him so he could be in a state of total mindless isolation while watching this and doing stuff to himself in their presence. It's interesting that that's the most which technological modernity has to offer even the people who are allowed to do literally anything they want. Well, finally, day, finally one day he was actually caught 
and put in jail for the crime of engaging in this sort of racketeering and human trafficking in which when the feds raided his properties, they found no less than 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lube. They also found IVs to um, have these women recover by replenishing their, um, their vital fluids after the days-long sessions of abuse that they were forced to undergo. And it's interesting that that, of all people, really shows you the face of the Democrat Party. For who is the Democrat Party now, except similarly out-of-touch, wealthy billionaires who stand to profit from the status quo because they will be let off the hook for their crimes, it'll be covered up, and despite having no talent, no knowledge, and no real ability to do even the thing that they're tasked with. He's supposedly a music industry leader, whereas the only song I can remember was one that he stole from somebody else. Um, much like the current vice president is somebody we're told is a public intellectual, but is unable to even remember the lines which somebody else gave to her. Well, I would argue that P. Diddy is the face of the Democrat Party in the year 2024, for nobody would be a Democrat today unless they were a similarly out-of-touch, wealthy billionaire who seeks to abuse the system of law to get out of jail for their crimes in exchange for giving donations to presidential candidates. But the question, once again, from the standpoint of fundamental demographics, is whether there are enough people like that. Are there enough P. Diddy's in the country to carry someone like Kamala Harris to the presidency? Because it's clear at this point, as they've once again lost the Muslim vote, um, as they've lost a lot of the younger African-American vote, as they've lost the Union Dems, who really is there left to carry them to the presidency if now they are the party of a super wealthy celebrity criminals. The question really I think will only be answered when we find out what really happens when all the votes are finally counted this November.